Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi hopes to secure a third term in elections that are now underway. His promise? A rising united India. But in India's northeast, a state is at war with itself. Hundreds are dead, tens of thousands are displaced, and the central government is accused of looking the other way. Producer Zeba Varsi got rare access to the deeply divided state of Manipur. And a warning, some details in her report are disturbing. It feels like a militarized border between two warring countries, but it's a road between two districts in an Indian state. Across 40 miles, we crossed a dozen checkpoints controlled by Indian security forces and civilian militias to reach the Christian minority stronghold, Chura Chandpur. Our fathers and forefathers lived together in Manipur, but the ethnic conflict in Manipur has been so sudden. 31-year-old Ichan Lunginlal is a Hindu from the majority Methe tribe who was married to Lal Nyo Lunginlal, a Christian of the minority Kuki tribe. They fell in love as teenagers. Their youngest daughter is six-year-old Lam Kolhing. We could not spend even one day apart. It felt like a love straight out of a movie. It was difficult for us to spend any time away from each other. They did not consider themselves star-crossed, but their love story ended when Manipur's fault lines cracked. I spoke to him and asked, how is the situation right now? He responded and said the situation has become tense now. I could also hear his voice shaking, but he still consoled me and said, don't worry. At around 11 p.m. to 12 a.m., I received a call from my husband, and I could hear him shouting, Itchin, Itchin, they have found me, and they are going to kill me. What began last May as a protest over political participation and state benefits turned into an armed conflict between two tribes and religions that engulfed the state in flames. Entire villages were razed and hundreds of churches burned. The bulk of the dead and missing belonged to the Christian Kuki minority, including Lal Nyo Lungin Lal. He was last seen in this video with two other Christian cookie men left to bleed on the street. The mob killed my husband after brutally assaulting him like an animal. I don't think even animals are subject to such levels of violence. At the wall of remembrance, cookies displayed death. Empty coffins in a line, one for every life lost. This wall bears the human cost of this conflict. The Kuki community calls it state-sponsored ethnic cleansing and they tell us that each picture on this wall has its own story to tell. Prime Minister Narendra Modi portrays India's future as strong and united. But election day in Manipur was marred by violence. The Hindu-majority Methe militia allegedly captured polling booths. They are heavily armed and throughout this conflict accused of killing with impunity. Civil rights advocates accuse the state government run by Modi's Bharatiya Janta Party or BJP of protecting the perpetrators and exploiting ethnic divisions. This is a war crime. This is ethnic cleansing. And plus, this is a religious persecution. Kim Gante is a cookie women rights activist who has documented sexual crimes. Most of our women who are there in the valley, they were being tortured. They were being raped, they were being killed. In May last year, two Kuki women were paraded naked, beaten and sexually assaulted by a mob of hundreds. One of them was allegedly gang raped. We are very much Indian. We are very much the daughters and sons of India. We really wonder why the central government is still keeping silent. Repeated requests for an interview with state government officials were ignored. After months of silence, Modi addressed the turmoil in Manipur only after the report of a gang rape. In this country, in any corner of this country, in any state government rising above politics, law and order and respect for women is important. I want to assure the countrymen that no culprit will be spared. But for the Christian cookie community, that reassurance rings hollow. They no longer believe in living with the Hindu metes. They want a separate Union territory, as we saw in the hillside town of Mori. Last year, this local economic hub was engulfed in flames. 
Today, it is heavily guarded by Indian armed forces and nearly inaccessible to anyone outside. After a six-hour wait at a security checkpoint, we were allowed to enter. The moment one community sees the other community, they want to kill each other. David Vape is a cookie activist in Moray. He says there is an invisible boundary between these hillside towns and the capital forged on hate. There is so much of divisions or mistrust between the two communities that the two communities cannot live together now. But Manipur's violence is on both sides. During our visit, an angry cookie mob set the police station on fire. 